In this video, let's take a look at some of our rendering options, do some rendering, and take a look at what we can do to post-process images. Whenever you go to your photo view render options, it's important to note that several things will affect the render time. The size of your render will have a direct effect on the amount of time it takes to render. A smaller image is going to take a lot less time to process. The render quality settings for final render quality will directly affect the output time of your renders. Turning on Bloom and Direct Caustics will also increase the time of your renders. Anytime you have extra calculations have to happen to render, it's going to directly affect the amount of time it takes. If we go to our view, lights and cameras, properties for our spotlight we created, having fog turned on greatly increased the render time. Having to render shadows will greatly increase the render time as well. Let's reduce the output of our light, turn fog off, and let's leave shadows on. Let's go ahead and do a final render and take a look at what we have. Anytime you go to select a final render, our preview window is going to pop up and do a pre-pass on our render. This is a good time to take a look at what's going on inside the render. From our statistics bar, we can kind of see what's going on in the background. We have our frame settings so we know what size our image is. You can see the render settings such as the number of cores being used to render. We have the memory used. And we have some geometry settings in here. You can see the number of vertices and polygons inside the model, the number of nodes, segments, and surfaces as well. You have shading, you have ray trace, you have buckets. So you can kind of get an idea of the process, how long it's taking, and how much memory it's using. After the render is complete, we have some image processing options. The first thing I'm going to do after the render is complete is save the image. Then we can modify the image and take a look at the difference between the two. You'll notice that there's image processing selection and there's a bloom selection here as well. So we can turn on bloom after the fact without having to slow down our render time. Now that the render is complete, I'm going to zoom in all the way and take a look at some of the detail. You can see that zoomed out to 25%, we didn't see much of the detail, but as we zoom in, we can see there's a lot of detail on the leather surfaces. You can also see that all the hard work that we put in to make these surfaces blend together nicely paid off in the end. Everything looks really nice. We probably need to go back and modify the base material from a plastic to something like a brushed aluminum that we can change to black. These are minor details, but these are things that you can pick up by doing some of these pre-render passes with some of your options turned off. We could also see that we could spend a little bit more time on some of the carbon fiber material. You can see the mapping shows that there's an issue in the weave. So we might need to go back and modify that as well if we were using these final renders for display images for some purpose. So let's save this image. We'll save it as steering wheel render and we'll overwrite that. And then we want to do some image processing. Let's zoom back out to 50%. Let's turn bloom on. We're going to play with our bloom extents. We're going to set this to 60%. We're going to set the bloom extents to 25. And then let's save this image. Save it as steering wheel render 2. Then we can load the original image in. Now if I control select both of these, I can compare them. You can use this slider bar to take a look at the differences between the two images. This is always important when you're post-processing because you can get an idea of whether or not the end result is what you were looking for. For instance, if we zoom in all the way, you can see that adding the bloom to the effect that we did gives us a little bit more detail on the leather, but it also washes out some of the image as well. There are also options that we can use to change the color balance in the model. We can modify the color using the vector scope on the right hand side. We can also change a lot of other options here. Rather than go through all these options, I think it's important that you guys create a render and you play with each one to see what it does to your image. Changing the image gamma is also another thing that you can do that will greatly affect, when we zoom in, the detail that you see on your leather. For instance, if we take this down to 1.1, or we take it up to 2.5, you can see that the highlights on our leather change quite a bit. Zoom back out, 50%. Let's change these numbers again. We'll go down to 1, and you can see that we have more of a whitewash. If we go up to three, we're really only seeing the highlights in certain areas. So these are little tips and tricks that you can use to play with your model and change the look of your output renders. 
without having to go back and do multiple renders, changing your light settings, and modifying colors inside your model. That concludes doing a final render.